We've got a big Cooper Cup update. And how will the return of Cooper Cup impact Puka Nakua and this Rams offense? Should the Rams consider trading one of their current wide receivers? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Ramley? And welcome to another episode of Locked On Rams, your daily podcast coming here to and to Los Angeles Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're also available over on YouTube. So if you have not yet, be sure to subscribe to Locked On Rams YouTube channel. Just past 9,000 subscribers, trying to get to 10K. So if you haven't yet, be sure to join the party, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button. My name is Doug McKay. My friends call me DMAC. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. I've been covering LA sports for over a decade. Sports Illustrated, 24-7 Sports, Dodgers Nation. Now the Rams four locked on. And as always, I'm joined by the Rams pre-half and post-game show host for the Rams flagship radio station. He's in his eighth season covering your Los Angeles Rams. He's known the streets as the people's champ. You can follow him on the X at Mr. Travis Rogers. And on today's episode, should the Rams trade one of their current receivers? <laughs> and then also, can Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup form one of the best duos in the NFL? But first, we got a big injury update about Cooper Cup. Travis, the Los Angeles Rams have elevated wide receiver Cooper Cup into the 21-day practice window yep. in preparation for week five's matchup against the Eagles. If the Rams feel like Cup can play, the wide receiver could start on Sunday against the Birds. Now, Travis, according to the Athletics, Diane Arusini, very trust reporter, Cup isn't quite there yet, but they're taking day by day. But she did add the Rams are still hopeful that he will give it a go this Sunday, but says that the injury initially seemed fishy, and we know that he was sent to Minnesota to see a specialist, but it wasn't as bad as they initially had thought. But my read on this situation is they're being very cautious, being very careful. They don't want to rush him back, but it does feel like all signs are pointing to him being back on the field on Sunday. Yeah, I, you know, I, I hope so. I, I hope that the, you know, the order of operations, right, the decision tree that you're making when you're you're deciding whether or not to activate a player. Um, we've heard Sean McVay say this a couple of times. We heard him say this uh, towards the end of training camp when we were getting ready for the beginning of the regular season, and we saw him say it last week when the decision to put a cup into that window that you're talking about, that there's a return to play and there's a return to performance. I'm okay with waiting for a return to performance. If that means you got to wait an extra week and maybe activate him against Arizona as opposed to Philadelphia this week, I'm okay with that because I think the worst case scenario, DMAC, is you bring him back and he plays and he gets hurt again right away and then he's gone for who knows how long, whether it's a few more weeks, whether it's the rest of the season, who knows. I, I, If there's even a little bit of, you know, I think I'm okay, but I might need another day or two, then you give him another three or four. You you need to make sure that when you do put him out there that there's the, the virtually no chance of re-aggravating this thing, and I think they might be cautious. I, I think that the fact that nobody said he's full green light go for Sunday – leads me to believe that there's maybe a 50-50 chance that he plays, but I would not be surprised at all if he did not go uh, on Sunday against Philly. Yeah, and color me a little skeptical, Travis, but when I hear her say that the Rams want him at 80 to 90% and he's not there yet after nope. a grade one hamstring strain, nope. he's been out over a month with, that tells me, is he 80, 90% as far as being back in football shape or yeah. is the hamstring fully healed and he's just trying to get up to speed? That's the big question I have because if he's not, they don't feel like he's there yet, there is no reason to rush him back. You got the big, yeah. bad Philadelphia Eagles coming to town. Yes, that's a matchup where not a lot of people are going to be picking the Rams in that game, but you're sitting at two and two. You have a lot of momentum coming off that overtime win. He's been great on the sideline, being the ear of all the Rams receivers. He's been fantastic coach cup over there. But I think this little cup date with this, I don't know how I feel about it. I want him at a hundred percent because when he's on the field, I never want him to get off the field. I don't want to have any lingering injuries. And we know that hamstring injuries, they're That's notoriously it. finicky. They notoriously no. linger. And you just don't want to risk that for the remainder of the year. 
No, the, these are the sorts of injuries that, like you said, they either continue to bother you and you're at less than your best or you get completely re-aggravated and you have to shut it down again and start the whole process from step one. Like, I, I don't want this to sound like they don't need him, but they don't have to have him against Philadelphia. They've done a good job of winning a couple of games for the first four weeks of the season. They've been able to keep their head above water. They've been able to do some things in the receiving game without Cooper Cup being out there. This isn't a make-or-break week for this team. Obviously, there's only 17 games. you got to win as many of them as you can. This is going to be an uphill climb, even with all of your players performing at their best. I don't know why you, you would at least consider the idea – of, of, of putting one of your most important assets moving forward in a difficult position, uh, knowing that some winnable games might be further down the road than they are this Sunday. I, I would, nothing's a hundred percent. I understand that, but I would like to be as close to certain as look, this is not going to be re-aggravated before I had put him out there. If that takes a week, if that takes two weeks, that's fine because the Rams have proven they can win games without number 10. Yeah, and I think that you've found Puka Nakua. He's been For a revelation. Sure. He's been the star of the league or one of the stars of the league, one of the big breakout players as a rookie. And I think with Cooper Cup, the big question now is, do you recalibrate expectations? What are fair expectations for him? We know that receivers, they start to decline once they hit 30. I think that with Cooper Cup, he's not a receiver I mean, that relies on top end speed. I think his speed is underrated. He's never get the credit for the speed he does have. But I also think that the attention to detail, the route running that he has, how smart he is as far as his football IQ to find yep. soft zones and just find wide open spots to have success. So I think, look, when you consider what they're looking for in Cooper Cup, they need him to be a dog. And I think that they need him to produce. But like you said, founding Puka Nakua. Let's say they didn't find Puka Nakua and Van Jefferson's performed like he's performed this year. Tutu Atwell, he's had a really solid year so far, but they could be in big trouble. And then you think, okay, we need this guy desperately back. They're not desperate at the moment. That, that That's it, exactly. They don't have to have it. And I know that we're going to talk about how a couple impact Puka coming up in just a couple of minutes, but what if we flip it on its head? What about the fact that Puka could impact Cup, right? The Cup coming back, and to your point, he, he's not a guy that's, you know, going to just, he's not Deshaun Jackson where he's just going to run by everybody. He's a big, strong guy, got good hands. He knows the, the game really, really well. What if he were freed up a little bit? And what if, it, and I'm not saying that if you're the Eagles or the Cardinals or the, the Steelers or any of the next three teams are going to play, that if Cooper Cup's playing, you don't pay attention to him, but you have to pay attention to Puka now too. And so just a little bit of space, a little bit of time that Cup may get because of Puka Nakua's um, emergence, I think it, I think is really important because if, like you just said, if Puka looked like most fifth-round draft picks and wasn't even on the field or when he was, was an unimpactful, if Van Jefferson continues to look like he looks, if Tutu's been exactly this, when Cup steps back on the field, every defender's going to know where he is. Every defender's going to make sure to try and stop him first. But with Puka there, it changes that math for sure. Yeah, and I just feel like that's almost the narrative of this team. One of the big storylines, people thought Aaron Donald was declining. He's not. Aaron Donald is still Aaron Donald. Matthew yeah. Stafford is still Matthew Stafford. He's still among the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. I don't see any reason why Cooper Cup can't come back and immediately have a huge impact on this team if he's able to stay healthy. I don't think you can expect a triple crown season, right? I don't think you can expect 2,000. 425 total yards, 22 receiving TDs total. That he did, he did enough for that season for three years, and you'd be okay with it. But I think the investment that they made in Cooper Cup, he's itching to get back, and I think that he wants to fast track his way back on the field because I think he's licking his chops, looking at Puka Nakua, looking at Tutu Atwell, because you got two great receivers that have some similarities, have some differences we're going to talk about in a minute here, but also having two to out that can take the top off a of defense. So I think he wants to get back on the field because this guy loves football. And I think that this team is overachieved to exceed expectations. And look, to beat this Philadelphia Eagles team, you're going to need every one of your guys on the field making big plays. So I expect him to play. I think he's going to give it a go. I think that they were smart to slow play this the way they did. I think it's been a little overblown. People freaking out the fact that they sent him to Minnesota. That's just the Rams doing their doing everything they can to get their $80 million player, right? Get, stay on the field for as long as possible. I, I, I hope you're right. But I, uh, <laughs> we, look, this is, we, this is not, you know, Bismarck, North Dakota or South Dakota or wherever <laughs> Bismarck is. It, it, this is, 
Los Angeles. There are a lot of good doctors here. There are a lot of people that specialize in sports medicine. And if they felt they needed to send him out of town, that gave me a, a minute to go, okay, this this may be something a little bit more uh, than I was hoping for. I hope not. I hope you're right. But And again, when he when he goes out there, he's going to be Cooper Cup. There's no dialing him back. He's, he plays one way, and that's full steam ahead. But uh, if we got to wait, let's wait. But if he's ready to go, let's see it, because those two guys together are going to be amazing. Good point. Good point. Hey, you never know where these specialists are going to live. I mean, Dr. James Andrew was in, in Georgia. We got Neil Elitrotch here. I guess the hamstring dude, whatever his name is, resides in Minnesota. So we still don't know where the LeBron James of feet is either. He could be anywhere. We, we heard about that and we never found out he could be in uh, Juneau, Alaska. Who knows? Exactly. Hey, these guys, they get to decide, right? But coming up <laughs> in our next segment, really fascinating about this topic. How will Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup coexist? Will they be complimentary players? Will... Cooper Cup slow down the development of Puka. That's coming up next here on Locked on Rams. All right, DMAC, let's talk about our partners at eBay Motors who have teamed up with Locked on Fantasy Football host Vinny Eiler to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. So whether you're preparing for a daily draft or you're covering that waiver wire every week, we're going to provide you with players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Jets running back Brees Hall has had a tough season so far. He's had some limited usage, but his explosive 56-yard rushing game on only six carries against the Chiefs last Sunday night is a great foreshadowing for his best game of the season. When the Jets blow through Denver in Week 5, look for Hall to fly a mile high with his speed and explosiveness. The Broncos' defense is falling apart against the run, especially versus faster backs like Hall. Expect Hall to go off to help the Jets try to get a much needed road win. That's Vinny Eiler from Locked On Fantasy Football. He's going to make sure he helps you win every fantasy championship, your fantasy championship, and eBay Motors knows the championship team is about each player being a for perfect fit, and the same goes for your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure that your ride runs smoothly all times, all day. Brake kits, LED lights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. That's eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And we're off and running here on Locked on Rams. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single weekday, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked on Rams, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to send a special shout out to our area listeners out there, too. You guys rock with us every single episode, watching, listening. We appreciate you. And you can be an everyday listener, too. I completely recommend the club. It's 100% free. You just got to listen and watch every day, and you won't miss a thing about your Los Angeles Rams. Now, Travis. I think one of the big storylines in Ramsland is how will Cooper Cup sure. impact the development of Puka Nakua? Because we know Nakua, he's been a superstar so far. 501 yards receiving through his first four games. He's sitting at the lunch table with Justin Jefferson and Keen Allen, Devontae <laughs> Adams, and Tyreek Hill. Only 16 players in NFL history that had more yards through four games in a season than Nakua. No one's had more than 501 yards ever to start their career. Now, we talked about in the last episode that yeah, it's probably not realistic to think he's going to sustain these averages, right? We're yeah. averaging over 2,000 yards receiving. But I think the first thing I'm looking at is the snaps. And he has 52 targets and 32.5 of the overall targets, 32.5% of the overall targets in the offense. Now, you compare that to Cooper Cup in 2021. Cooper Cup, the second best receiver as far as the target rate was Van Jefferson at 14.8%. So I think the first thing is his targets are going to go down to a degree if you do have a fully healthy Cooper Cup. Yeah, I, I think there's kind of a couple of different ways to look at this, D-Mac. It is, you know, obviously with Cup back, Cup is one of the best in the game at that position. That You got to throw him the ball. You got to find a way to get the ball in the number 10's hands. He's, he's a difference maker, and you're going to do that. Um, and that's going to reduce Puka's talk targets like you're talking about. Here's the other way to look at it. 
More good players is never a bad thing. More options for Matthew Stafford is never a bad thing. We've seen this before. It just hasn't been with Puka Nakua. It was with Robert Woods. Those guys both got a lot of catches. Those guys were both heavily involved in the offense. Now, maybe what it does is it allows Puka to make a few more big plays that instead of having that second guy, instead of being the focal point of the defense, that's going to be on number 10 instead of on number 17. But I don't think this is anything other than great news. Yeah, sure, the production comes down. And unless you have Puka on your fantasy team, I don't think you care. If you're just a Rams fan, if you just want to watch the Rams win football games, this is nothing but good news. Two weapons is better than one. Three weapons are better than two. And putting Cup back on the field gives you that second or third weapon, depending on how you're going to look at it. I can't wait to see it because I think Puka will still put up big numbers, but I think you're going to see more big plays. You're going to see more shots down the field, more open space. Most of the balls that Cup, or excuse me, that uh, Puka has caught. There's a guy right on him. He catches it. He gets hit. He's down on the ground. Now I think you're going to get to see a little more rack yardage because he's going to be in open space because you got to cover two guys instead of one. 100%. Anytime you can add an elite player, it's only going to help. It's a good problem to have. Like Sean McVay said yesterday, anytime you're able to add a player like Cup into the mix, we're going to be better. Figure out how to be able to utilize both of them. Those are champagne problems. That's something we've kind of thought about, but I think it's situationally specific. I love that you bring up Robert Woods. To me, it almost feels like Cup lost his dog in Robert Woods and that he had to grieve and he had to mourn and he got a brand new puppy in Puka Nakua and then life's <laughs> all great again, right? I think that's kind of the case with him. And right. I think, look, they do a lot of things similar. Of course, I kind of push back to put him in the same sentence as a Cooper cup this early. I feel like that's a little bit jumping the gun, but as far as sure. their skill set, what they do at elite levels, I think there is similarities. There is differences. I think the similarities between cup and Puka, huge catch radius, sure. Aggressive hands can make off balance catches, high football wow. IQ, great at reading defense as well. Finding gaps in soft zones, great at getting yards out of the catch. But the difference is though, cup is quicker. Quick cup is an elite route runner. I mean, his, Breaking ankles ability is off the charts. We've seen that. And also Puka, a little bigger, a little yep. stronger. I mean, fights off press coverage, fights for jump ball. So there is differences to where you can say they're complementary and that they can have some yin yang. And I think you're going to open up some underneath routes for 2-2. Yep. Then you're going to open up some things for the run game. I think Tyler Higby is going to benefit. I think that there's a world where you look at this, t- this team as having the best duo. I mean, Chris Carter, Randy Moss, Holt and Wayne, right? I mean, there's duos that we've seen in the history of this league to say, okay, yes, Matthew Stafford tends to lock on to one receiver when they're great. But when you have a Nakua who's emerging like he is, I don't see any reason why these guys can't coexist and flourish together on the same field. You know, I like what you said, that it's not just, a, you know, an advantage for the two of them that they could feed off each other. It's everybody else, too. So if I got two dynamic playmakers on my team, like you will in Coop, uh, Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, well, what does that leave for Tutu? What does that leave for Higby? What does that leave for Kyron Williams? What does that leave when they go into some four wide receiver sets for Van Jefferson? I think there's a ton of opportunities there for sure. I I, I think the other thing that I might add to the mix, too, DMAC, is – versatility that when you look at what one of the things that's so similar between this duo of wide receivers and the time, the previous time that they've had cup with Robert Woods is they were almost interchangeable in what you could ask them to do. You can line them up at all three different spots that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the defense, knowing that is cup in the slot. Is he lined up at the X? Is he lined up at the Y? Is he the Z? And, if I got more than one guy that can do that, we've seen what it looks like. That's what it was with Woods and with Cup. This is what it was with Woods, Cup, and Brandon Cooks, a guy that could fly and could get behind everybody. Maybe that's 2 2 Atwell's role on this team. Now, Cooks is a little bit more of a complete wide receiver than Atwell is at this point in his career. Cooks is a multiple time, thousand yard guy. He's a really good NFL player, but the pieces kind of fit the same. And we've seen it. When you had. OBJ and Cup, it opened it up for everybody else. When you had Woods and Cup, it opened it up for everybody else. I think this is good news, not just for the two of them, but for everybody that's a target for Matthew Stafford. That's 100% true. I will say, Travis, though, I do hope that Mike LaFleur still has a big 
involvement and a big input in this play calling. I still want to see a balanced attack because I know it's going to be very enticing to try to put it in the air throughout the game with all these weapons that they're going to have at their disposal. But I also think it's a fair question to say, how healthy is he? How prone to injury is he? Can he still make those sharp cups and run those elite routes? And I think he still can, but I think we still need to see it. He's going to be on some type of snap count early on. I think you bring up a great great point point. earlier that looking at this from a fantasy perspective, which if you're here watching this because I have Cooper Cup injury update in the title, welcome (laughs) and please subscribe to the channel. But it's a very different outlook on it. And I think that a more balanced attack is going to bring longevity to Cooper Cup's career. I've seen people out there, though, Travis, they're saying, oh, we can't have Cooper Cup hurting Puka Nakua's progress and this and that. And they're falling in love with the shiny new toy. It almost feels like Cooper Cup has Andy on the bottom of his foot and he's Woody from Toy Story. And then Puka Nakua is Buzz Lightyear. I mean, let's not forget that Puka Nakua is great, but Cooper Cup is legendary already in his career and what he's been able to do. As long as I'm not ham on the offensive line, I'm okay with the uh, Toy Story <laughs> analogy. That's fine. I just don't want to be that guy. Um, look, you bring up a good point. And I think that something to keep in mind with Cup is this is his third major injury of his career. We know that he had the knee injury that caused him to miss a lot of time. We know what happened last year that caused him to miss basically the second half of the season. And he had a different injury this year coming in that's caused him to miss the first quarter of the season and counting. We'll see how much longer he's out for you, you don't want to have to throw it to him a million times and take the pounding that he, because like you said, D-Mac, he's a tough guy, right? I, and he's, he's far more skilled and, and technical than I think people give him credit for, but he's also that hard-nosed guy that I think we all love. That can only last for so long. Having another target out there that can also do those things is nothing but good news. This, this is good news. It's going to change the way that Nakua gets used. But ultimately, having Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup's an all pro. He's not just a good wide receiver. He's an all pro. There, It was a year ago that we were talking about that maybe he was going to get some MVP consideration. Getting him back is nothing but good news. And also, he's such a high character guy, too. He's yep. not going to go out there and sulk if he doesn't get no. the ball or that Puka Nakua had a better game than him. I mean, they've seen people out there say, okay, look at last year with Allen Robinson, and you didn't have that connection with Stafford. It's a totally different situation because the difference is Stafford worked with Puka the yep. entire training camp, the entire beginning of the season. It really was a silver lining to Puka's injury, the fact they were able to build that chemistry and rapport. So I don't see the connections there. I think Stafford realized that he's got more weapons at his disposal. I think it's going to be the Puka and Cooper Cup show. I'm excited to see it. I hope it starts this Sunday. But coming up next, with with Cooper Cup returning, should the Rams consider trading one of their current wide receivers? We're going to tell you who that is and if they should do it. That's coming up next here on Locked on Rams. All right, Locked on Rams is sponsored by BetterHelp. So I think intuitively we know what's good for us, right? We know what the right thing to do is. And you're thinking, okay, I know what I'm supposed to do, but your brain keeps getting in the way, right? You ever feel like you can't quite turn off or get stuck in that loop? Like you know what's good for you, but you just can't find a way to get it done? That's where therapy can help you figure out what's holding you back. So you can work on yourself instead of working against yourself. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, why not give BetterHelp a try? It is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's been designed to be flexible and it's suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if you don't click with that therapist, it's easy to switch at any time for no additional charge. So make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off of your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Work with your brain, not against it. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. And welcome back to Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday, free and available, Rev Gear Podcast. And one more reminder, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to Locked On Rams YouTube channel. Try to get to 10,000 subscribers. So do us a favor, join the party, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, and also let us know, should the Rams trade wide receiver Van Jefferson? Because Van Jefferson, Travis, he had a big opportunity in front of him with Cooper Cup missing the first four weeks of the season. Season, and he has not taken advantage of it. Yeah. He's been targeted 15 times, had just eight catches for 108 yards in four games, 
One of those catches was a 46-yard reception against the Bengals. He's had two drops in that span. He just has not made the most of this opportunity. And we know the way that Sean McVay likes to use his receivers. With Cooper Cup returning, I think Puka absolutely goes without question. He's going to have a big role. I think Tutu Atwell has absolutely solidified his role. You got Ben Skronik. I mean, I just even have Demarcus Robinson who could step up. All right, so let, let's I, – I, I agree with you. I think that it's something that you certainly explore and see what might be out there available to you. I don't know what kind of value he would have on the market at this point. I don't know if you're looking for draft compensation. I don't know if you're looking to maybe add some depth at another position. So I, I, let, let's start with that. But here, here's the case to not trade him. If you think that you need you know, more secondary help, sure, go do it. He, he's the expendable piece right now for all the, me, the reasons you said. Here's the reason to maybe pump the brakes on it just a little bit. Cooper Cup has been hurt two seasons in a row. He's coming off of an injury like we've talked about that is one of those classic ads re-aggravated and he's down again. You're going to need him again. There's going to be a market correction on Puka Nakua. It's going to happen. He's a rookie wide receiver. He's not going to catch 10 passes a week. He's not going to catch 100 uh, yards worth of, of receiving yards every single week. There will be a market correction on him at some point. You're going to want an additional weapon. Ben Skoranek is nice and all this stuff. Van Jefferson's a better player than he is. Now, Van Jefferson hasn't got a ton of balls this year, but the ones he has got have been pretty big plays. We're talking first down. We're talking getting the ball down the field a little bit. I'm, I, I'm disappointed in what I've seen from him so far this season. But there's not no value there. This, this, we, we saw what happened when you start running out of depth at certain positions. We saw it on the offensive line last year. We saw it at the wide receiver position last year. You need depth in some of these spots. And if Van Jefferson is your fourth wide receiver, you got a pretty darn good wide receiving group. That, that's a pretty good group. Now, if you need to plug a hole somewhere else, I'm open to it. It's not a heck no, don't do it. But there's a reason to keep him as well. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, depth we've seen already help this team with Kevin Dotson along yeah. the offensive line. But the reality is, if he's not going to contribute with getting this opportunity that he had, I mean, he's played the most snaps of any Rams receiver, and he has less targets than Kyron Williams at 22. Yeah. has less targets than Tyler Higby at 26. If you've seen Van Jefferson, please return him to SoFi <laughs> Stadium before Sunday's game because he has been on a milk box missing this season. And it's unfortunate because it's a free agent year. And they're not going to bring him back next year, right? So if you're the Rams and you could trade him, you could theoretically probably get a day three pick. And I just want to point this out from Ian Rappaport. He said the Panthers have already been active on the trade market this season. Sources say calling several teams about a potential trade for a starting wide receiver. Is there a connection there? I think so, because his dad, Sean Jefferson, is the Panthers wide receiver coach. Yeah. I think that would make a lot of sense. I'm just trying to put sure. things together. Maybe I can facilitate this trade myself. So <laughs> it's just a possibility. And I think if Van Jefferson wants an opportunity, this might be what's best for him. It, it, it may be. Or, you know, the, the obvious thing, what is it, Occam's razor, that the most obvious explanation is the right one. Maybe he's just not that guy. Right. This, this idea that we've been thinking about, of well, he can step into the number one role in Puka or in uh, Cooper Cup's absence, or he can be in the number two role of Cup and Nakua are in that number one role. Maybe he is a WR3. Maybe he is a WR4. Maybe that's just kind of his lane in this league. And we got to stop thinking that, okay, we need to find a way to get him eight or nine catches. That's just not his role, that he's a two or three catch guy that, you know, we, we've, we, we made a joke about it the last few seasons that it always felt like the first big play of the game went to Van Jefferson because Cup was getting so much attention, because Odell was getting attention, because Robert Woods or Todd Gurley or whoever it was that I know that Gurley and Jefferson were together, but they they paid so much attention to their big guys that it allowed the say Tyler Higby big plays to open the game. Van Jefferson big play. Maybe that's his role. It's not to be the workhorse guy, but to be the kind of the changeup guy, the knuckleball guy, the guy that just gives you a little bit of a different look occasionally. True, all good points for sure. And look, I mean, you saw the game winning catch against the Raiders. You've seen yeah. some big plays from him. That's certainly the truth. But just seeing how they handle the Cam Akers situation is it feels like they're not going to use you. It feels like I'm going to be a part of yeah, this offense. A maybe they'll try to get some assets. Acres was problematic. A a Acres yeah. was was Acres was not good in the room, as they say. Right? They they we then me the 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 team is better than the invite. It, a Acres was not fitting into the Ram culture. There's been nothing about that of Van Jefferson not fitting in. He's just not playing particularly well.
Yeah, no, agree for sure. I mean, I'm trying to get Van Jeffers the bag because I know he needs the numbers <laughs> to secure that. But Look, anybody that gives him his bag is doing it wrong. But go, 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 go get it. Go, go, go get it. But you, you, you better give it to him quickly and give yourself one because you're not going to have a job very long if you give Van Jeffers in the bag. Hey, man, these guys, contract year, never underestimated. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Rams. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And, all, and as always, you can follow the people's champ, Mr. Travis Rogers, on the X at Travis Rogers. Until next time, whose house is Locked On Rams' house?